our friend, and we're going to do another article now from Indie Media Award honoree, Kit Clarenberg, and you have to say that name three times slowly, uh, Kit Clarenberg, from the Gray Zone and Mid Press and several other publications. He published yeah. something yesterday that I found pretty, or two days ago, Freedom of Information Request reveals that Belling Cat, we all know about Belling Crap, Collusion yeah. with Western intelligence. And I don't think this is really much of a surprise, but to see it in the emails, to see it in, and this is this was picked up by Sheer Post and republished, and Sheer Post, oh, by the way, also is an indie media. Sheer Post, the Gray Zone, Kit Clarenberg, this is a triple <laughs> hit right here. So I was like, oh, this is great. Exactly. So... An extraordinary email uncovered by a Dutch researcher under freedom of information laws confirms what many have long charged that Bellingcat, the open source collective widely cited by mainstream journalists and loved by the CIA, collaborates directly with Western intelligence agencies, even though they claim to be independent. And that's where this goes. So this is an article about Bellingcat by ARS Electronica. And Kit writes in the gray zone, and this is somewhat long, but it's important to understand. And I, I actually had a, a AI reader, and we'll stop and we'll, we'll comment on some of this throughout the way. But an email sent in 2020, November 2020, now this is during COVID lockdown censorship, by an officer within Amsterdam's National Coordinator for Security and Counterterrorism, shows that a Bellingcat investigation was intentionally shared with the agency prior to publication so as to assist the Dutch spooks in shaping media strategies and messaging following its release. So we know this is going to come out. Help us figure out how to deal with it. That's basically the revealing communication is irrefutable proof that the cozy relationship, the self-styled independent investigation, investigative collective of researchers and investigative investigators and citizen journalists, as they dub themselves, enjoys with Western intelligence services. They have a cozy relationship, Bellingcat and Western Intel services. Right? I, I don't think this is much of a surprise mm -hmm. to anyone. Actually, if you look at back a year and a half ago, the dissident, who is one of an old INN member who, a legacy, he's still around. He doesn't publish anything, but he still shares on Twitter. At uh, leftist underscore news 12 is, is his handle on Twitter. But what he, you know, he had this a while ago that Bellingcat is just a propaganda factory for Intel. But in the message, which is marked high importance, the undisclosed author... Explain, explain that Bellingcat would soon publish research amounting to deeply libelous attack on independent journalists and researchers who challenged the mainstream narrative surrounding Malaysia Airlines Flight 17. Interesting. Right. right? This is like three years ago. So this is, as such, the Dutch intelligence officer wrote, quote, it's probably smart to put together interdepartmental wording for this already. That's, yeah. that's Get weird. Get story Inter straight. Interdepartmental. Wait, how are they still even in the same department? Because the article highlights several sides, MH17, but also COVID-19. Coronavirus! Safe, Coronavirus! Safe and effective, but it's probably wise to wait and see if, A, the mainstream media picks it up, B, from which angle they pick it up and highlight it, either being the crash or COVID, and C, from the angle... From this angle, then to determine the wording and therefore which department is in the lead, they coordinate the language as much as possible interdepartmentally. This is unbelievable. So basically they're saying, yes, we need to get our story straight. We need to figure out multiple <clears throat> scenarios, what could happen, and then game plan according to that. Hey, Bellingcat. And, and then they're going to release some in, information. This is all right? in Dutch. Which and is, it's all in Dutch. Right. A hilarious. Like, would worry so valuable. The mainstream media had a picking. Yes. Yeah. Right. So 
Um, the article in question, which is entitled, quote, the GRU's MH17 Disinformation Operations Part 1, the Bonanza <laughs> Media Project, that's was a he, mouthful of a movie. Man, Roger Ebert's going to have a tough time getting that one out. Yep. The Cruise MH7 Disciplinary Operations Part 1. Just Part <laughs> like, 1. What? what? Just right. Part 1. The Bonanza Media Project. What, well, that, what it, we're going to have it, fucking... It would probably just be called... Shooters and... It would probably just be called the Bonanza you know, Media Project, I would guess, as the main right. title. Right. But anyway was it was framed as an investigation into a now defunct independent media venture named Bonanza Media, which was established by Russian journalist mm. Yana Yershilova, y- Yerlashova, with the help Yerlashova, of freelance yeah. Dutch, right? Which, uh, with the help of freelance Dutch researcher Max Vanderwerf. Now, much Max of Bonanza's work challenged Western assertions <laughs> that separatist fighters in Donbass shot down MH17 with a buck surface-to-air missile system provided to them by the Russian military. Right, that's what the narrative was. And they were saying, no, that's not true. Ukrainian officials began pushing that narrative, citing audio recordings they claimed to have intercepted alongside material purportedly found on social media implicating the separatists, even before Malaysia of Airlines course. publicly announced it had lost contact with the plane. Of course, Ukrainian officials would say something like that. It's it's Russia. I'm going to repeat that they blamed the Donbass before Malaysia officials publicly announced that they had lost contact with the plane. They jumped the gun. How how do you motherfucking know? Like, um, hello? And oh, wow, Billy Pat happened to (laughs) surreptitiously launch just days before the downing of MH17. And it came to prominence by immediately seizing on the deluge of carefully curated and potentially falsified information. With amazing speed, the organization claimed to have precisely mapped out exactly what happened that fateful day and exactly how it occurred, despite its relative inexperience and opaque organizational structure. Its findings were accepted without a shred of scrutiny by Western journalists, lawmakers, pundits, and the official Dutch MH17 tribunal, which concluded last November. That's amazing. Oh like, my God. Stop the line. Line. everyone, like, it's, <laughs> it's, wow. I mean, it, it, it's really stunning. So, yep. Bonanza's film, MH17, Call for Justice, Right, this was a, a real thing. It features interviews with witnesses on the ground that day and Malaysian government inter- officials who did not accept the official story, but doesn't rule out the possibility right. of Russian culpability altogether. How? Wow. How? Oh. However, however, uh, we have to get Stephen A. Smith going. However, right. The documentary presented a substantial challenge to Bellingcat's version of events which also happened to align neatly with the official narrative. Hmm. Amazing. Mm. In 2020, Bonanza also published leaked documents uh, confidentially submitted to the tribunal. This included Dutch intelligence files recording that while many Ukrainian buck systems had been spotted in eastern Ukraine, Russian equivalents were nowhere to be seen. So tell me how it was the Russians... So tell me how it was the Russians when the only systems that were there that were spotted at all were Ukrainian. Evidently. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Evidently, Bellingcat and its founder, Elliot Higgins, who has me blocked on Twitter because I have embarrassed Mm -hmm. him and I I subscribe and support the Gray Zone. And they are, Uh, he has made it his life's work to take down Max Blumenthal and the Gray Zone. And he's got the help of the Intel community to try to do it. Anyway, Elliot Higgins and Bellingcat were displeased with their results. So as Dutch freelance journalist Eric Vanderbeek wrote in 2020, quote, because it was impossible for Bellingcat to discredit Vanderwerf on the basis of well-researched content featured on his blog and recent documentary, Elliot Higgins opted to wage a campaign of misinformation. <clears throat> wow, go figure. Bellingcat waged yeah. a misinformation campaign? Get the hell out of here. Yeah. I want to give a special shout out to Fred Edward back, uh, hopefully, uh, and feeling better. So, hope you're doing better. 
Yeah. All right. So Bellingcat's 2020 investigation into the group strongly insinuated that Bonanza was being run by Russia's GRU. Russian scum! Let's hear it again. All right. Heavily implied uh -huh. that their Russian investigations... scum! Yep. They heavily implied that their investigations were edited by the agency's operatives before publication and suggested that its contributors were on the Kremlin's payroll. Of course. They claimed uh. that their conclusions were based on emails from the, in from the mailboxes of... Wait. They, this is how they out themselves. They say that their conclusions were based on emails from the mailboxes of two senior GRU officials or officers obtained by Russian hacktivist group and independently authenticated by us. We checked mm -hmm. ourselves. We checked it ourselves. Russians. And what do you know? It's true. Huh, how about that? Yep. We authenticated it. Yep. Thank you so much, Dave Burt, for the $2 tip over on the Rock fans. Appreciate that. Um, that's unbelievable. So we authenticated it. Oh, yeah, it must be true. Strict British libel laws may have prevented the group from making direct allegations to this effect, but the Dutch media had no such qualms, and the investigation triggered a wave of smears in major local publications. One daily newspaper even headlined as a fact that the MH17 blogger directed by Russian Secret Service, even though totally not true. Another right. which which directly asserted that Vanderwerf worked under the orders of Russian military service, GRU, is currently being sued by the researcher regarding the unproven claim, which they should be. Strikingly, though, throughout this period, not a single mainstream journalist, of course, questioned how Bellingcat acquired these highly sensitive trove of documents upon which its investigation depended. Hmm. On top of confidential GRU emails, how would it get access to that? <laughs> Bellingcat yeah. somehow acquired phone data showing calls between purported Russian intelligence officials and cell tower data tracking their movements, which it claimed pinpointed locations, their locations to GRU headquarters in Moscow. Okay, this is the biggest face palm because none of this information is remotely is, open source. Uh, yeah. And therefore, since it wasn't shared publicly, it can't be independently verified. Right. We said it was in, we said it ourselves. We verified mm -hmm. it ourselves. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, by the way, 1G Mars, no, it's not swinging Democrats. It was swinging Republicans. The Moms for Liberty people are hardcore right wing evangelical Republicans that had the whole swingers thing. Going, getting back to that story in between. Sorry. Oddly in one squirrel, oddly in one passage, Bellingcat stated that it is not clear, quote, this is unbelievable again, it is not clear who requested or suggested changes to a Bonanza article it alleged were made after the piece was submitted to the GRU before publication. They just made the whole thing up. Yeah. One might think ascertaining this would be simple given the vast amount of highly incriminating evidence to which Bellingcat had exclusive access. <laughs> I love Kit. So tongue in cheek. Well, perhaps British libel laws were a deterrent to act, to accusing the GRU. But why would this be the case that the material was authentic and defending it in court was no issue? Hmm. There's yeah. that too. So, like, there's eight ways that they tell on themselves with this shit, and that's why I'm cracking up. Nicole Vance, I can see this message. Hello. You are over at the Indie Left channel. Most people, I believe, are chatting over at the INN channel, so that's why you can't see most people. And you're seeing the restream bot. Yeah. This is this is you also what I happens. Mean, that the MH17 verdict undermines Bellingcat, which is, again, hilarious. The newly released NCTV email strongly suggests Bellingcat's investigation into, demand, into Bonanza was the product of a Western intelligence op information operation. What a surprise. Intended Bonanza to steal and Western intelligence? Shit. What well, is no. this? Actually, the Bonanza was trying television? to Bonanza was trying to out it. Right. Western Intel was going after Bonanza. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> in now I hope yeah. I hope YouTube doesn't doesn't hit us first. So some kind of copyright <laughs> yeah, thing you, for that. You, you did YouTube, it perfect. You got right? 
the perfect representation of the Absolutely. theme song. Well, yes. They knew what I meant. Anyway. No. Yep. Sure enough, Russian nationals Igor Gherkin and Sergei Dubinsky and Donbass separatist Leonard Ch- sure. Karchenko were convicted yeah. in absentia for the murder of MH17's 283 passengers and 15 crew members. The court ruling, they arranged the transfer of the buck surface to air missile system that reportedly struck the plane. So they actually use this evidence to convict people without them even being in the room or having a chance to defend themselves in absentia. That's um, also stunning and amazing. Clowns. Meanwhile, the only defendant to seek legal representation and give testimony during the trial, Oleg Kuletov, was acquitted on all charges. The court found there was no indication he was involved in obtaining the missile system that he could have prevented its use, or that he was involved in transporting it to another location after the incident. Prosecutors announced that they will not appeal the verdict. So he's getting off. But the other three, they now have their fall guy. They've got their patsy. They've got their their guilty person they can point to and say, they're the ones that downed the plane. It wasn't Ukraine. What do you mean? Yeah. The response by the normally brash Higgins to the Dutch court's judgment was uncharacteristically muted. That's nice. That's a nice way to put it. In an otherwise self-congratulatory Twitter thread, he merely noted that Pulitov is acquitted. The rest are found guilty. There was no explanation for why the defendant was found innocent, nor any analysis of the ruling's potential implications for Bellingcat's MH17 investigations. Not really a surprise mm-hmm. that he doesn't want to focus on the fact that his entire operation got exposed for being a fraud. Stop Higgins, and, well, he's he's paid to spread it. It's not just that he's lying; <laughs> he's intentionally misleading oh, people. Hell? It's bad. Oh my God! No way! Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> Elliot and his crack squad of laptop jockeys were understandably (laughs) embarrassed on these counts. Yes, thank you, Kit. All right. Not the least because Bellingcat chief, the Bellingcat chief repeatedly mocked Pulitov and his lawyers during the tribunal, suggesting that his conviction was a fait accompli and sneering when the defendant testified accusations of responsibility for MH17 resulted in adverse personal consequences for him. Surprise. Yeah. June 2020 Bellingcat investigation lambasted uh, Pulitov's testimony, suggesting that his defense strategy was unlikely to win the court's strategies. Uh huh. Sure. Sympathies. So, sympathies, that too. By right. Me. Well, he won the sympathies. All right. And then here's how they, this nonsense, this they completely make this stuff up. Criminal organizations run yep. by these people. That then they run with this narrative. You know, this is exactly the kind of stuff that Media Matters we talked about last week. They're being sued for inventing uh-huh. an entire problem and then yes. screaming bloody murder what's about source? what's about to happen. What's your source, sir? We My verify- source? What? Imagination. We, but we validated That's my source. It. This was from 2019. Sure. Talking about. Where did you get that from? Hamilton 69? You might as well have. Oh, I didn't want to. Do that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's Leonid Parchenko. Oh, he's the one. Yeah. He's the guilty party. Hmm. These three. Oh, Pulitov, but he's not guilty. Karchenko and Dubinsky got, you know, Alexander Semenov. I've heard that name before. I've heard a lot of these names. Semenov, yes. Yes. So Bellingcat's yep. confirmed collusion with MCTV raises obvious questions about whether the organization's relentless attacks on journalists and researchers who do not toe the official national security line are also directly coordinated with and on behalf of Western intelligence agencies. I think we know the answer to that one, dude. In many cases, Bellingcat's attacks have real-world consequences for its targets. And let's take a look at a few. For example, Bellingcat has, over many years, tried to destroy the career of MIT Emeritus Professor Theodore Postol, who questioned the official investigations into alleged chemical strikes in Syria. 
which yeah. we know that the white helmets were invented and that, that somebody certainly did cause a, a get, some kind of attack there, but who did it and how and why is a big question. And it likely was not people they say did it, according to all the investigators and the special rapporteur, you know, um, Aramate did a whole investigation with the guy from the UN. Um, what's his name? Jose. I can't think of his name now. Bastado. They basically threw him off the, the investigation because he did not give the result that the UN wanted. But he's like, I, I can't help it. That This is what I'm, I'm following the facts. They didn't want him to follow the facts, and they took him off the investigation. That's what happened with when it came to Syria and the White Helmets. Throughout the Syrian conflict, yeah. Bellingcat published investigations blaming government forces for chemical weapons attacks, yet typically within hours of them allegedly happening. How did they know so quickly that it was Syria? Mm -hmm. These findings were in invariably based in part on material provided to the organization by British intelligence constructs on the ground, such as the bogus humanitarian group known as the White Helmets, like I just said. Yep. In the immediate aftermath of the notorious 2018 Duma incident, and by the way, Eva Bartlett has done extensive yeah, research Vanessa. on this as well, Vanessa Bealey, yeah. okay, which OPCW whistleblowers suggest was staged, and that's who I was talking about, Jose Bustani, was the lead OCP OPCW whistleblower. All right, Higgins tweeted an exclusive photo of one of the, of one of the cylinders purportedly used in the strike. Uh-huh. The post was a, was abruptly deleted, though, because perhaps the White Helmet subsequently shared a photo of the same site in which the same cylinder was in a different position. Hmm, how could that happen if they weren't tampering with evidence that they or they didn't do it themselves and plant shit? That was proof positive that the scene had been manipulated by those staging it. This in British academics who've helped expose Duma and other chemical weapon strikes in Syria as opposition executed false flags in which British intelligence was frequently complicit, have likewise uh, re been relentlessly targeted by Bellingcat. They are an attack dog for the intel community, masked as, an, as a cutout, as an independent news agency, as an independent research gathering agency that even organizations like the MH17 Tribunal to try to find someone guilty for what happened to that plane will even credit. It's scary and dangerous and wrong. All right. Uh, Nicole, thank you for resubscribing. Uh, people have been unsubscribed all the time. Uh, you might, you know what? Uh, you were a paid subscriber to INN's channel when we got demonetized. When we did, or when we when, when we had our monetization taken away, that might have been why they when they unsubscribed you potentially. But thank you for popping back over. Um, mm -hmm. Elsewhere, Bellingcat fabricated and misrepresented evidence to smear independent Bulgarian journalist Diljana, and I'm not even gonna attempt that last name, as another potential GRU asset. They see Russians everywhere. Meanwhile, the organization has played a lead role in disseminating and verifying dubious, if not outright fraudulent material and claims related to the Ukraine conflict throughout its duration. Investigations by the Gray Zone strongly suggest that Bellingcat operas were directly implicated in a Ukrainian intelligence operation gone wrong, which Kiev's forces killed. That's interesting. Um, I don't remember mm -hmm. that. That was or that was in April. I didn't know that. Okay. But CIA veterans have openly praised Bellingcat, we know, for stating publicly what spy agencies cannot. Mm, so they basically, it's a leak mm -hmm. agency, just like the Intercept, by the way, Ryan Grimm. Yeah, we, we, we see you too. In a December 2020 foreign policy article entitled Bellingcat Can Say What U.S. Intelligence Can't, literally, the CIA's former deputy chief of operations for Europe and Eurasia was quoted as saying, quote, I don't want to be too dramatic, but we love this. Whenever we had to talk to our liaison partner, partners, instead of trying to have things cleared or worry about classification issues, you could just reference their work. 
unquote. That's so they're a British organization that somehow has enough information about confidential classified CIA stuff that they could reference it, and that was not considered a problem by anyone at CIA. I wonder why. Accordingly, leaked files exposing the internal workings and integrity initiative, which is uh, a British intelligence black propaganda operation tasked with ginning up conflict with Russia to pad the UK's defense budget, were rife with references to Bellingcat. What a surprise! As an internal document which describes one of the group's goals as increasing the impact of effective organizations currently analyzing Russian activities notes. <laughs> Well, we already do this with Bellingcat. Like, right out of the UK defense mm -hmm. stuff. The Integrity Initiative, yep. okay? So, as a result of such, such excerpts, this journalist repeatedly asked Higgins about the nature of his and his organization's relationships with, with the Integrity Initiative. Though initially evasive, in March 2020, Higgins finally denied any association in an email that concluded with an ominous threat. I'm not kidding. And here's what Higgins literally wrote to Kit Clarenberg. I'm not sure how I can explain this more clearly. Bellingcat has never worked with the Integrity Initiative, nor were we contacted by them about any proposal. The funny thing is, your shitty reporting on the matter had proven quite useful to us Looking forward to you finding out how. Try not to feel bad, but I guess I should thank you for your absolute idiocy. Mm -hmm. uh, almost four years later, this journalist is still waiting to learn what Higgins and his collaborators in Western spy agencies have cooked up to make me feel bad, given the confirmed interest of British intel in sabotaging this outlet and the crazed allegations to me uh, put to me by the counter-terror police who detained him in London earlier this May, he may have already made good on this threat. And I think that that's what he was talking about, having him detained when he came back into the country. And of course, yep. douchebag Higgins and Bellingcrap were approached for comment, but they had nothing to say because they're chickens and they're stooges for the intel community and they're assholes. And we shun you! You shunned! We do not like you. <laughs> yeah. Buck Bellingcat is all I can say.